So I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but this is a really, really neat lesson. I appreciate you working through it with me. Don't worry if you get stuff wrong during it, you're not gonna be graded or anything like that. I'm just gonna give you a completion grade for getting through it all the way to the end and give me some good feedback. So today we're gonna to talk about solving what's called a quadratic equation. So first of all, what is a quadratic equation? Well, it's an equation that contains an x squared term. So you think now about all the factoring that we just got done doing. We have factor in x squareds and all those other things. Those are all quadratic equations. And when we solve a quadratic equation, it's going to have a total of two solutions. And the reason why it has two solutions is because of that x squared term. When we have an x squared, there's two values that we can plug in for x that would give the same answer, the same output. And I'm gonna kind of show you those in a minute. So take a look at what we got here. This is what the equation is gonna look like. We're gonna solve for all the values of x. And here's a little hint. When I say all, I mean more than one. So like two, most likely two, but yeah, you never know. Maybe we'll throw a three at you. So for, for here, notice the equation is x squared equals 25. Well, we know when we solve equations, we wanna undo things. Like if we had the equation say like 3x equals nine, we would undo that by dividing by three. So instead, we wanna think about, well, what undoes? How do we undo an x squared? And we did it last class. That's our square root. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the square root of that side. The square root of x squared gives me x. Now, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you gotta to do to the other. So I'm gonna do a red square root over here. Why red? I don't know. Now, you know the square root of 25 is five, right? But it has two answers. The square root of 25 is a positive five and a negative five. Hmm, let's think about that. Because what's negative five times negative five? It does equal positive 25. So the way we would usually write this answer is we'd say because there's a plus and a minus, a positive and a negative, we would write it as plus or minus five. That little symbol there, plus minus, means just that. It means plus or minus. So there's two answers to this equation. When we solved it by taking the square root of both sides, we got plus or minus five. So that's kind of like the way we'd say it. We'd say plus or minus five. That would be our answer. So let's try a couple more. You see some others next to you. And I gotta be honest with you. I'm trying to trick you on a couple of these. So first of all, let's solve for the, the top one. X squared equals 49. We'll do the same thing. We'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of, four, of X squared is X. The square root of 49 is seven. So we're gonna say it's plus or minus seven. Now the second one is a little tricky, or the next one is. If we take the square root of both sides, okay, the square root of x squared is x, but here's a problem. I gotta think of two numbers. What number times itself equals negative 16? There are no numbers that do that, because if you multiply a number by itself, it has to be positive. So there's no solution here. There's no solution because x squared can equal negative 16. Later on in math, we'll make solutions, like you're talking like two years, ask Mr. Baker about that later on. Take a look at this last one. We're thinking, oh, this is great, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides, right? Here's a problem though. How do you take the square root of nine x? What does that equal? Who knows? I mean, the square root of nine is three, but the square root of x, uh, I don't even know what x is. So that has no solution either. Well, it will have a solution. I shouldn't say that. I'm going to cross that off. But we'll talk about how to solve those later on. Okay, so we'll put later for that. So we're solved by doing square roots. That's the fun part. Take a look at our next couple. And I know what you're saying. You go like this. Oh, no, I'm scared. Why are you scared? Because 24 is not a perfect square. But that's okay. That doesn't stop us. We take the square root of both sides. I got something squared equals 24. I take the square root and I get x equals, just like before, plus or minus square root of 24. But we can go further than this. Do you remember that yesterday or last class, we took the square root of 24 and we broke it down, we simplified the radical? 
24 became 4 times 6, and the square root of 4 is 2. So radical 24 simplifies down to 2 radical 6. So the answer that we'd want to say then is x equals plus or minus 2 radical 6. Okay, and that answer should be treated just the same as plus or minus 5. I mean, if you, if you want to get crazy about it, you could write it this way if you want. You want to write 2 radical 6 and then x equals negative 2 radical 6. You want to do that? That's fine too. But that answer is perfectly acceptable. So knowing that, can you do the next one? So we take the square root of both sides like before. We're going to get that x equals plus or minus the square root of 54. And ha ha, can we simplify it? Let's think of two numbers that multiply to 54. How about 9 times 6? And the square root of 9 becomes 3. So we get 3 radical 6. So our final answer then is plus or minus 3 radical 6. And we are happy. Yay! So let's keep going. We're having fun. I know you're looking at the next ones already wet. I can see it. But think about what they say. They say that something squared equals 64. Well, how do we undo squaring? We just square root it. So let me see. Where's my eraser? Here we go. Let's erase all that for a moment. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now, just like before, where the square root of x squared was x, the square root of the square of x plus 1 is just x plus 1. It's just going to be whatever's underneath or whatever's in the parentheses. And the square root of 64, remember, is 8. It's a positive 8 or a negative 8. So this is where the fun begins, because we not, are not done solving for x yet. So I have to now subtract 1 from both sides. But notice what I'm going to do here. Because the 8 is positive and negative at the same time, my answer is going to be negative 1 plus or minus 8. So let's think about those answers then. One of them could be negative 1 plus 8. One of them could be positive 7. And the other one could be negative 1 minus 8, which is negative 9. So those are our two answers, x equals 7 and x equals negative 9. You want to check them real quick? Let's do that. Check this out. If I plug in 7, I'll do this over here on the left side, I get 7 plus 1 squared. 7 plus 1 is 8. That's 8 squared, that's 64. If I plug in negative 9, this is awesome. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. And when you square that, you still get 64 and you are loving life. So can you follow what you just did above to get the two values of x for the next one? Go ahead, I'll wait. Alrighty, let's check it out. Bam, bam, square roots. So I'm left with x minus 3 equals, yep, plus or minus, the square root of 36 is 6. So let's add 3 to both sides. Notice I'm not adding it directly to the 6 because it's either going to be 3 plus 6 or 3 minus 6. Do you want to figure out your two answers? Let's do that. So one of them is going to be 3 plus 6. One of the answers is 9. And the other answer is 3 minus 6 or negative Three. Those are our two answers. And if you want to check them, you can. They should be right. Cool, man. Well, let's keep rocking and rolling. Here we go. Same thing. Oh, but 18. But you know what to do if it's not a perfect square. See if you can tackle this one. So we take the square root of both sides. We're going to get x minus 5 on one side we get plus or minus radical 18. Now, do you want to add that 5 over? Sure, you can do that. Do you want to break down the 18 first? Yeah, let's do that. I like simplifying radicals. So 18, let's see, how about 6 times 3? Nah, that's no good. How about 9 times 2? That's good, because 9 is a perfect square. And the square root of 9 becomes 3, and we get 3 radical 2. 
So my answer then is x minus 5 equals plus or minus 3 radical 2. Now check this out though, because when I add my 5 to both sides, I can't add the 5 to the 3 because the 3 is being multiplied by the radical 2. So literally, my answer is just going to be 5 plus or minus 3 radical 2. Yeah, it looks a little different, but that's how it is. I mean, think about if you got an answer of like 5 plus 3y. You wouldn't say 8y. That would be bad. That would be bad. So we just got to leave it as 5 plus or minus 3 radical 2. Do you want to write it twice? Do you want to write it as x equals 5 plus 3 radical 2? You can do that. Just make sure you write the other pair, or the other one, 5 minus 3 radical 2. Pretty neat stuff. So we solve these, these, these quadratic equations by taking square roots. So check out our one last one. Little word problem. The formula for the surface area of a sphere is a equals 4 pi r squared, where r is the radius of that circle. So there's like our picture. Not they need a picture, but I like drawing one. We want to solve it for r. So we want to get r by itself. So I'm thinking if I look at this formula, a equals 4 pi r squared, I ask myself, what, what's happening to r? r is being squared. Okay, so r is squared, and then it's multiplied by 4 pi. So let's undo this. Let's instead divide by 4 pi. Well, let's make that a pi symbol. Pi. There we go. And then instead of squaring, the inverse of squaring is square rooting. So let's see. Let's divide everything by 4 pi, and we'll keep going in blue because blue is nice. It looks like the sunny day you see outside your window. So a over 4 pi equals r squared. And now maybe we'll go to red and we'll take that square root. And you know what? I'm going to take the square root of this whole big thing. And what I'm going to get for my final answer then, we'll go back to blue, is that r equals, it's an ugly looking square root, but we got to leave it like that. I know what you're saying. Isn't that 4 down there tempting? Don't you just want to take a square root? Don't. It just makes it more of a disaster. Leave your answer like this. So think about all the great things you can do now. You can solve an equation by taking its square root. Beautiful stuff. Combine it with the simplifying radicals. Ah, oh, fantastic. So now, take a look. I, I need you to give me a little bit of feedback on this. I want to see how you did.